Hey guys, so I want to start this video off by saying thank you so much to everybody who has been here, been watching my videos from the very beginning last summer when I first got accepted to ultrasound school. Um, if this is the first video you're watching, hi, my name is Julie and I'm an ultrasound student and I am documenting my journey through my ultrasound program. And I'm so happy to say that I am done with my first year of ultrasound school. Woo! So this video is going to be all about my second semester in school. If you guys haven't already seen my video about my first semester of ultrasound school, go ahead and watch that first and then head back to this video so you can see what we've been learning. The main focus of the second semester has been pathology. So we were learning all about pathology of the abdominal organs in one class. And then our next class was called pelvic and first trimester. So in that class, we were actually learning normal pelvic and abnormal at the same time. And let me tell you guys, there is so much pathology. I mean, it's an insane amount of stuff that we had to learn, but all of it is stuff that's going to prepare us to take our board's exams. I mean, seriously, we learned like 300, 400 something pathologies. The classes were definitely pretty challenging. Um, it was like my whole life this semester was just learning and studying and memorizing all these different pathologies, um, reading the textbook, and we also had a pathology project that I'll show you guys a little bit later that we had been working on from the very beginning to the end of the semester that helped us to really learn each pathology. I was able to finish the semester with a 4.0 again, but it was really, really hard. <laughs> it was a lot of time and effort. I know it sounds like a lot, and it is, but I promise if I can do it, you can do it. You just have to be disciplined. Make sure that you have enough time to study. It's just an example, a couple of pages of the pathology project that I was talking about. So we had to make one of these charts for each of the pathologies that we learned. And we did have to do this project for both of our classes. Um, so basically we had to include images and then we had a couple different um, categories that we had to fill out. So we needed to know the definition, the risk factors and causes, the clinical signs and symptoms, the sonographic appearance, differential considerations, and treatment and prognosis for each of these pathologies. So this is just basically what it looks like, and then I labeled like each of the pictures, um, sometimes depending on what they are. So that was basically it. So I have this whole binder full of all of the pathologies that we learned throughout the whole semester. And basically this is to be used as a study guide in the future for our boards. So again, we started that project um, the very first week of school and it pretty much went up until final exams. Um, we did have to you know, pretty much stay on track with which unit we were learning. And it was a lot. I mean, every day I would spend multiple hours on my computer typing this stuff up. A lot of the information is in our textbook. Um, some of it is in the PowerPoints that our um, teachers give us, but then a lot of it also we just had to look up ourselves. In each of our classes, we learned um, a different organ about every like two weeks or something like that maybe. It just depended on how many pathologies we were going to talk about for each organ, if it was like a week or two weeks before we'd move on to the next thing. And then we did have a test um, every week in alternating classes. So on Monday, I'd have a test in one class, and then the next Tuesday, we'd have a test in the other class. So I hope now that I've explained a little bit about how the past semester has been going, you guys understand why I have not been able to post so much. It's been crazy. I mean, every single weekend, studying for a test, doing like 10, 20 pages of a project, like, it's been a lot. It's been, it's been pretty draining, so I'm on my little two-week summer break. Um, and then we do go right back into the summer semester in a couple of days. So I'll tell you guys about the summer semester at the end of the video. Now I'm going to talk about how lab has been so far on um, the second semester. So lab was definitely a lot different this semester than it was first semester. First semester we had our scan quizzes, um, which if you guys haven't heard me explain what they are, check out that first video about my first semester. I explain what those are. Um, but in the second semester, we did have some scan quizzes for pelvic since we hadn't learned um, how to scan with the female pelvis in the first semester. So we were doing scan quizzes for that. 
But as far as everything abdominal, since we've already done all of our scan quizzes the first semester, now we were doing our benchmarks. So the benchmarks are when we are actually paired up with a partner, um, not of our choice, first thing in the morning, and the instructors actually sit behind us and watch us from the very beginning of the scan to the end. Um, we do like a patient interview in the beginning where we ask them their name, their date of birth, obviously, to confirm the patient identity. Um, and then depending on whatever organ it was that we were scanning for that benchmark, we would have to ask specific questions targeted to diseases and pathologies related to that organ. For example, if we were gonna be scanning the aorta, we would ask the patient things like, are you a smoker? Do you have high blood pressure? Do you take any kind of medication for high blood pressure or anything else? Um, have you had a family history of aneurysm? So at first, the benchmarks were like a really scary thing. I mean, during my first one, I was literally shaking the whole time, like to have my teacher standing right behind me, literally like grading, so you could hear them like writing things down, like grading you as you were scanning. Um, it was really, really scary, but the more we did it, you know, the more comfortable we got with it, and by the end, I wasn't nervous at all anymore. Altogether, we had five benchmarks um, throughout the semester. Uh, I think we started with pancreas, just because it's a very short exam. Um, then we had aorta, liver, gallbladder, and kidneys as well. So they were every couple of weeks, and you know, we knew when they were going to be. We had a schedule laid out for us at the beginning of the semester, so we were able able to you know practice and make sure that we were prepared for each one but you never knew who you were going to get partnered up with so you might have been practicing on five different people over you know like the two weeks we knew we were going to have the benchmark but then you could get paired up with a totally different person that you haven't practiced on yet benchmarks for us are considered a critical competency meaning that you do have to pass it to be able to move on and continue in the program. Um, I think you get like a couple of different tries if you don't pass the first one to redo it like a couple days later or something. So unfortunately we did lose some people this semester. It was really heartbreaking. Um, but just to let you guys know, that is um, how the benchmarks work. Okay, next I'm gonna talk to you guys about my clinical rotations over the second semester. So I had two rotations um, over the past semester. Um, the first one I had was at um, a hospital and I loved that rotation. I wanna go back so bad, you guys. It was amazing. Um, so I was actually the first student to be sent to this site in a really long time. Um, since like the beginning of COVID, this hospital has not allowed students to come back. So I was the first student sent back there. I was so happy that they, you know, thought that I would be a good representation of the program. So at this specific site, I was with this one sonographer. There were a lot of other people who worked there, obviously, and I did scan with other people. But basically, there was one sonographer who basically like took on the student, you know, they really wanted to teach, which was so great because he really, really cared about letting me scan, giving me lots of scan time, and really watching every second of my scanning and he was able to like coach me through like each picture, what the next image should be, especially if it was something that I hadn't ever scanned before, like legs or like female pelvis or something like that. So I actually got to scan most of the patients while I was there. Um, there were only like two or three times that a patient um, didn't want me to scan them. And I think it was because like the patient was in just a lot of pain and they didn't want to have a student, you know, like messing around. They just wanted to have the actual ultrasound tech get in there, get the scan done quickly so that they could be out of pain, which I totally understand. But I did about 35 complete exams from beginning to end in my eight weeks while I was there, which was like double the requirement of the next rotation. So it was seriously like the best rotation I have had. I mean, I had only had one before that, so there was not a whole lot to compare it to, but I love it. I love it so much, and I really hope that I get to go back. On top of getting so much scan time while I was there, everyone was so nice. Even the people in like the other departments that we would sometimes like share our room with and things like that, um, they were all so nice and so welcoming and very professional. During any free time, 
um, the sonographer would like pull up previous scans to show me or like a CT or an MRI to show me what those look like. Or we'd just like walk around the hospital and he would like show me different areas and show me how to do things like um, set up the oxygen tank or whatever, things like that. So my next rotation, which was the second eight weeks of the semester, wasn't as exciting, but I still did get to see some pretty cool stuff there. So it was at an outpatient center. That's the first time I'd ever been sent to an outpatient center. And I definitely don't think that's for me, just because most of the patients did not show up on time for their appointments and the company that I was with, like they didn't really do anything about it. I know some sites probably have like a cutoff limit of if you're, you know, 15 minutes late or whatever, you have to reschedule your exam. But unfortunately at this office, they didn't have any kind of late policy. So people would show up like hours late to their appointments and still get scanned and it would just throw the whole day off. Um, there were two techs working on the days that I, well, it was either one or two techs working on the days while I was there. And um, most of the time I was with these two girls who were a little bit newer. Um, so obviously, you know, they spent more time doing their exams and I just really didn't get a lot of scan time there, which was a little bit unfortunate. But I did get to see a lot of really cool stuff. Um, they did a ton of renal artery Dopplers and liver or spleen Dopplers. The hospital that this outpatient center is connected to is really big on transplants. So we would do a lot of transplant liver and transplant kidney scans. So that was really interesting. I've never seen anything like that before. That's not something that we really get a chance to talk about and learn in class. It's really something you have to see out at clinical. So I am super grateful that I was able to see that and experience that, even if I didn't get to scan that much. I was still able to get you know, all the minimum requirements that I needed to you know, pass the course. So that was that. But it's just really something to think about when you get a chance to see the hospital setting versus the outpatient setting. Um, there's definitely a difference, so you guys will see, and you know everybody likes different things, so you'll find the right fit for you. One quick thing that I also want to mention is that all of these senior students, so the class above me, they all passed both of their registries that were required to take before graduation. So they all passed um, their abdomen and their OBGYN registries. So that was super exciting. There is a little board with like balloons and decorations on it with everybody's names and credentials written on it um, in our classroom. So it's super exciting. It's really inspirational, I think, for our class, the juniors, to see like this is going to be us in a year. Like it really gives us a lot of like motivation to actually see people just a year ahead of us. Like graduating, they got two credentials already with their name, and a lot of them had like multiple job offers. They were like having to choose between where they wanted to work, like it's amazing. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about what's coming up next semester, which literally starts on Monday for me. So um, it's a shorter semester, obviously, it's just summer. It's eight weeks long, so we have um, one clinical rotation. We are going to two different sites, though, during the same rotation. So I'm going to a big hospital that I've been told is like very fast paced, so I'm excited for that. Um, they told me I'm supposed to get like a lot of scan time there, which is gonna be super great after the last site I was at, where I didn't really get that much. Um, and the other site I'm at is actually at an OB clinic, which is super exciting. Like I said, we had just started learning like intro to first trimester last semester. Um, and so now I'm going to be at this OB site where I'm going to get to see and learn a lot about, a lot more about OBGYN scanning and get to see a lot of babies. So I'm super excited about that. Some of the clinical sites actually just, um, this rotation started allowing junior students to come to the OB rotations. We don't actually get a formal education on um, second and third trimester OB until our senior year. So this is the first time that they're letting juniors come into their OB sites. I am super excited to be selected for that and to be able to experience that. And hopefully I'll learn a lot before we start class. So I'm hoping that it kind of like puts me a little bit ahead once we do start talking about that in class. But the main focus of the summer semester is actually vascular. So that's the one class that we're gonna be taking over summer's vascular. So we're gonna be learning how to do like veins and arteries in the arms and legs. We're also gonna do carotid. Um, I don't really know what else. That's 
all that I can think of based on the types of vascular scanning I've seen done at clinical. Um, but that's basically what we're going to be doing over summer, so I'm pretty excited for that. The textbook that we're going to be using for our vascular class, it's by Davies. It's the illustrated um, review and it's the fifth edition. Anyways, that is pretty much the recap for this whole past semester and upcoming semester for you guys. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any questions about this past semester, upcoming semester, let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much. Bye.